The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Thank you very much, Apostle Chairman, for the opportunity to present on the e-church of the Church of Pentecost. Many of us have heard about the e-church, and I'm happy that at this August occasion, we get to understand the concept and be ambassadors of the e-church as well. This presentation centers on the Church of Pentecost e-church, and we're going to look at it briefly, introduction, how the whole e-church concept looks like, and then we'll also look at the leadership, the governance, the ministry aspect of it, and how uh, people can become members of the e-church. I've heard some say they want to become members of the e-church, even at this conference, but we'll get to know who becomes a member as well. So we are embarking on an audacious global mission, uh, which is to make Jesus uh, proud once again. Uh, Christianity, as we know, in our world faces a lot of frowns and discouragement in many parts of the world, almost in every continent. According to a research uh, by uh, the Pew Research Center, um, there is a lot of persecution and intimidation going on against those who want to profess their Christian faith and even those who want to practice it. In Russia, Afghanistan, in North Korea, and so many other countries, we see persecution ongoing. And we also have a lot of individuals moving from continent to continent in search of greener pastures, and by so doing are cut off from fellowship. They don't find churches in the areas where they go, and after a while, they dip in their Christianity. We also have people who find themselves in a place where there is no church at all, and so they don't have fellowship. There is total absence of fellowship. And then there are places where a lot of persecutions are also going on, and so even if you want to come out as a Christian, your life will be at risk. For all these people, they still need to encounter the gospel. They need to hear the word of God. If we cannot go there physically, how can we get them for Christ and build them up? And that is where the e-church comes in. The e-church is a fully-fledged online church which is designed to provide individuals in such situations with the opportunity for fellowship without barriers. Our world is marked by a lot of physical and ideological boundaries, but then the e-church is able to transcend all these boundaries, break these limitations, and ensure that no one is left out when it comes to finding solace and support of a spiritual community. So the Church of Pentecost e-church is not merely an online platform, but it is a vibrant missional congregation. And by missional, we mean that we are looking for those who are lost, those who need Christ, and give Christ to them. Build them up and then make them ready for heaven and unleash them to also change their world. As a result, it is not for existing members of the Church of Pentecost. It is for those who are not members and who need Christ. For Church of Pentecost members, uh, you may be an associate. You may be able to follow some of the content playback on most of the platforms, but the e-church exclusively is for those we win and those who become members because they find themselves in the situations I earlier enumerated. The implementation of it is at the global level. Uh, so the e-church um, operates at the global level and it will run for a period of one year. And then it will scale down to the block and then to the national levels as time goes on. It starts as a one assembly, but it would have three centers where it will be operating from. So we have a center in Ghana, 
we have another center or satellite in the United States of America, and then there is another one in India. And then it will have appropriately uh, developed studios uh, where the, the gospel and then ministry will be discharged to all members all over the world. And at the global level, we are looking at three uh, languages. Uh, these are English language, um, Hindi language, and Arabic. These three languages together, we are looking at about 2.1 speakers globally. And if, by the grace of God, the E-Church is able to win 10% of that, 20% of that, 30% of that, you can look at the numbers that will be able to win for the kingdom of God. These people are those we can't reach physically, but through the internet, through technology, we'll be able to get them for Christ. And then we're also going to look at, because of accents and, and understanding, um, features like lower third captioning and subtitles will be used to make sure that if I am in India and then somebody is speaking, I'll be able to understand the accent, the same in America, the same in Ghana. Wherever it is you are, you'll be able to understand whatever is being taught. And later on, we are looking at languages like French, Chinese, uh, Spanish, as these are also international languages that are very important and people there would also need the gospel. These languages also put together gives us about 2.1 billion people that we can reach for the gospel. So you realize that the E-Church gives us a huge harvest field of souls that we can together harvest for Christ. We also look at sign language because we are an inclusive church and so sign language will be a constant feature in all the programs of the E-Church. The E-Church has a 13-member global team. It has a minister in charge, an apostle of our church, and then it also has a supporting minister. It has a presiding elder. It has heads, <laughs> it has heads of working uh, teams. I will explain the working teams further. Then we also have reps from the America block. The America block, we are looking at one from North America and one from Latin America to, to, to concentrate on the Spanish uh, and, and other languages in the Southern America. And then we also have one rep from Europe. There is two from um, Africa. We are looking at Eastern Africa, Swahili, and the languages like that. And then also uh, Francophone Africa with the French. And then Asia and Oceanic Bloc will also have one rep on the team. And then Middle East will also have a rep on the team. Sitting right beneath the global team is the ministry teams, the technical teams, and then the finance and administration teams. Now, the ministry teams is responsible to um, handle all the ministry operations of the E-Church. So when we talk about E-Church, um, we are talking about having services, having Bible study, having prayer meetings, having visitations, everything that happens in a, a, virtual, a, a physical church, the E-Church will provide that for members there. And so for such ministry to be offered to people digitally or virtually, there is the need for us to have these teams. There will be teams in India, teams in the U.S., and teams in Ghana focusing on the Bible studies, the music and worship, um, evangelism. We'll do e-crusades, e-evangelism uh, campaigns, uh, e-follow-up, uh, pastoral care, counseling, uh, prayer, and other uh, ministries that may be needed to support the e-church ministry. Then we also have the technical team. The technical team is more skill-based, and these are people who are very skilled in ICT when it comes to uh, development, web development, front-end, back-end, and all other uh, technology uh, skills that we will need. Uh, these will be the, the technical uh, team. Videography, streaming, back-end, uh, social media and community management, content creation, web and mobile app development. This will be the team. And as I speak, I'm sure some of you have some skills in there, and then you can come on board to also help. And then we have the finance and administration team. They will be handling the administrative bit of the e-church, and then also the finance bit of it. And these are people who understand our policies very well and can, can manage uh, the admin and the finance of the e-church. 
At the block level, uh, after the global level and it comes to the block level, we are looking at a nine-member leadership team uh, led by a minister in charge and then also with a team of people that will be working with him. And later on, if it goes to the national uh, level, we're also looking at a seven-member uh, leadership team uh, that will be managing the e-church at the national level. There, it will be a leader in charge because this leader could be an apostle, it could be a pastor, it could be an elder. And so that national level uh, decision will also be taken and then operationalized there. But the e-church will not be operationalized below the national level. It will be at the, at the global level, it will be at the block level, and then subsequently in future when the need be comes to the national level. Now, I want us to look at the programming and ministry bit because that is where a lot of uh, work has to be done. Uh, the, the ministry focus of the e-church, um, of course, is to win the souls, and then when they come in, we build them up through prayer, we build them up through Bible study, we build them up through music and worship, we build them up through um, evangelism, uh, follow-up, small group activities, uh, pastoral care and counseling, uh, capacity building. Um, these things will help grow the souls that we have in the e-church and help them to become better Christians and will be able to further uh, the, the, the kingdom agenda of our God. Uh, there will be weekly programs, uh, there will be monthly programs, there will be quarterly programs, and then annual programs as well. So there will be main services like we have in our physical churches. We will have Bible studies online. Uh, we will have uh, prayer meetings. We will have counseling. We will have visitation uh, where shepherds are able to visit their, their members and check on how they are doing. Uh, there will be communion teachings, uh, prayer meetings, uh, music and pre sessions. Uh, we would have quarterly conferences and seminars that are supposed to build the members up Bible conference, prayer conference, capacity building workshops. We would have conventions as well as e church. Christmas, as all physical churches meet, e church will also have our Christmas convention and Easter convention and all other programs like that, including digital excursions with the help of VR and augmented reality. And all these programs you are talking about uh, will happen in the three languages we have mentioned, English, Hindi, and then Arabic. There are also resources being developed to help all of us understand the concept well. So there is a COP E-Church handbook, uh, very important, and then also training materials to train leaders and then working team members, and then also a resource on the theological basis for the COP E-Church, the theological basis for EO, uh, COP E-Church. Uh, technology is the vehicle on which uh, the Holy Spirit is going to move into the world, and so technology is taken very seriously when it comes to the E-Church. Uh, some have been thinking about what happens to data, what happens to security, cyber attacks, and all of that. These things have been factored in, and right from the onset of development, up to when these uh, systems are being implemented, security is of great essence. And inter interventions have been put in place to make sure that people's data, members' data, members' um, identity on the platform are protected and nobody can take them. The eChurch has a tagline. If I say the COP eChurch, your response will be reaching everyone for Jesus. C-O-P-E Church. Oh, this was low. C-O-P-E Church. Hallelujah. This tagline encapsulates the essence of our E-Church assembly. It signifies our commitment to shatter limitations. It is also enabling us to allow everybody to experience the transformative power of Christ without any hindrance. A pastor reached out and said, what if my member travels somewhere? And I said, Papa, if your member is traveling and then you are going to lose touch with your member, so my member is going to somewhere that there is no church, Christianity is forbidding. As the member leaves the church and goes to that place, there can be an interaction with the e-church where e-church keeps the member 
For as long as they are outside, as long as they are in a place where there is no Christianity, as long as there is a place where there is no church, until when they return back, and then they will be reinstituted into the, uh, the physical church again. And so there is a way that we would collaborate and make sure that the e-church works and works very well for every member. Then again, questions like baptism uh, comes up. I'm sure it is in the mind of some people that how are you going to baptize members? The focus of each church is missional. It is saving souls. And so for places where it is very possible for us to baptize souls, we can definitely make arrangements with other COP churches that are around to get the members baptized. But where there are challenges where you cannot baptize them, our focus will be to disciple them, to build them up in Christ, to make sure they have a solid foundation with the hope and the, 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 the expectation that when they move from that place to another place where it is possible to baptize them, we can always baptize them. But the baptism should not be a barrier for which these people cannot be discipled and nurtured in Christ Jesus. Somebody also asked, um, communion, will you have e-communion? Uh, we also have a means where we can have members on the e-church having communion. All we need to have is to get our members have the element, which is the wine and the bread, and then the minister in charge or whoever is leading the fellowship, together with all of us, lead us to have the communion. And so we do not see any challenge prohibiting or preventing us from reaching out to the souls. Whatever that we can do physically and for which might be a difficulty, we still want to di disciple the souls. We still want to build them up. And then at the appropriate time when the opportunity presents itself, we can do the other physical activities for them. By the grace of God, a lot has gone on in terms of uh, development. Um, a lot has gone on in terms of um, the implementation plan. Uh, currently, um, appointments have been made, and then the team has been put in place. And very soon, um, the launch would happen. And we want to encourage as many of us globally, um, if you are skilled in, in technology, if you are skilled in any skill sets that is useful to the e-church, definitely you have a place. Because the ministry teams, the technical teams are looking for people like you and I, filled with the Holy Spirit, young, hungry for God, who can help come together, put our strengths together, and be able to go out there and win souls for Christ Jesus. So all of you, are welcome to be on the teams, and then we'll be able to, together, win the world for Christ. Hallelujah. There is a studio impression I want to um, I'm show. Sure. Uh, this has actually been worked on uh, in Ghana, in the U.S., and then also in um, India. So this is how the E-Church studio looks like. Um, cameras, screens, and then all these um, are very technological, very advanced. And this is where, by the grace of God, many, many, many who have not come to the saving knowledge of Christ will encounter Christ as we minister through this to the world. We want you to continue praying for the e-church. We want all of us to come on board and support it with our strength, with our prayer, with our goodwill. And we know that the Lord through the e-church will go to where we haven't been and will be able to win the souls there for himself. In concluding, Apostle Chair, as stepping into the online space for a dedicated church ministry is a challenging task. It's very challenging. A more relevant question is, is God at work in the online space in this generation? I believe so. And if God has already taken the lead and taken the step there, then for Church of Pentecost, it is a great opportunity for us to take a step and join him there. Together, let us join Christ in the virtual space and possess them for Christ. Amen.